Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome to Motion Nations. And in this video, we are going to create the scene in Blender. This is very easy to create, so let's begin. Alright, so right now I'm in Blender. But before we begin, we have to download a 3D model. For that, you can head over to mixamo.com. And after that, you can sign up with the Adobe account, which is completely free. And once you are done with that, just simply go to characters. And from here, you can select this mannequin. Just click on use this character. And after that, just click on download and just simply download it. Make sure that the format is FPX. And once you have downloaded it, you can import it in Blender. So let's open up Blender. Now, first of all, I'm going to delete all of these. So you can press A to select everything, then X delete. Now let's quickly import our model. For that, you can go to file, click on import. And from here, you can select FPX. And after that, just simply select the file which you just downloaded. Just click on import and there you go. Now you can see we have our 3D model in Blender. Now we are going to create the landscape using an add-on. For that, you can install the add-on by simply going to edit preferences. Just click on add-ons and from here you can search landscape. And after that, just simply check this box and it will be installed. Once you have installed the landscape, you can access it by simply pressing shift A. Then under the mesh, you can select the landscape. Now we can edit this landscape by simply opening up these properties. And after that, we are going to use a preset. So just click on these presets and let's pick up the canyon. And right away, you can see we have this really nice canyon over here. But if you want, you can play around with these values. It's completely up to you. But for this example, I'm not going to do anything. So let's just simply select this. And right now it's very small. So we can scale this by pressing S and then just simply drag it so that it's scaled up something like this we can scale this little bit more just like that now we can press ctrl a and let's apply scale and we are pretty much done with the landscape so let's select our model which is right over here like this and let's press g z and let's move this up something like this so you can see that we have the model over here and let's quickly place this to a location where we want our 3D character to be standing. For that, we can press G and let's just simply move it. And we can probably press seven on the numpad to get to the top view. And after that, you can just simply move it around. And let's find a really nice place. I'm going to place it over here. So again, let's press seven and let's press G. So you can just simply align it. After that, let's press G, Z and let's move it down something like this. Now you can press dot key or period key on the keyboard to zoom into the model. And now let's quickly align this. So press G, Z and let's align it on the ground something like this. Now you can press R, Z and let's rotate it to the other side just like that. Now it's completely up to you. You can place your character wherever you want. Just make sure that it's standing on the ground, something like this. Now let's pick a really nice angle from where we want our 3D model to be visible, something like this. Now we can add our camera over here. So press shift A and let's create a new camera. Now press control alt and numpad zero so that the camera will fit to the view. Now you can press N to toggle this view and under the view you can lock the camera to the view so now if i move my cursor you can see that the camera will move according to that so now i can zoom in zoom out and let's place it to a really nice angle but if you want precision then you can go under the items and from here you can just simply use these values and let's just simply set this to zero and let's turn this around here now it's completely experimental. You can play around with these values, something like this. Now I think that this is too big, so we can probably select the armature and let's press S and let's scale this down, something like this. Now you can go outside the camera by simply pressing numpad zero. Now let's change its pose. But first I'm going to simply select this, press R and let's rotate it around the Z axis, something like this. Now, in order to change its pose, you have to go under the pose mode, something like this. Now, we have to select these bones. So in order to make them visible, you can go under the armature and under the viewport, just click on view in front. And now we can probably select this armature, then press R 
and just simply rotate it something like this now select this one press r and rotate it like this so now you can see that we have our model in a standing position now we can go back to the object mode and we can probably disable the in front this is exactly what we want so we are pretty much done with it now let's add our cube so we can press shift a and let's go to mesh and let's add a cube and it's completely up to you you can add whatever element you want you can add susan which is the monkey or you have if you have any 3d model or planet something like that you can just simply add it into the background now let's press numpad zero and let's go to the camera so that we can see the cube now let's select this and i'm going to quickly scale this up something like this and let's go out of the numpad now i'm going to move this so press 7 on the keyboard and we can probably move this far behind something like this now again press numpad 0 so that we can see the cube we can scale this up and let's move this little bit up we'll probably scale this down now let's play around with the rotation let's set this to negative 45 and let's set the x value to 45 as well there you go now you can see we have this really nice cube and let's give it a really nice position just like that so we are pretty much done with our scene and now let's start adding some materials to this so this is going to be our final view so i'm going to just quickly disable the lock camera to view so that we don't accidentally move our camera now let's go out of the scene first let's switch to the rendered view by simply clicking over here and i'm going to change the renderer to ev and we are going to enable the ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflection under this make sure that half resolution is unchecked just like that now let's go to the world tab and let's change the background to completely dark because we are going to add our own lights so let's press shift a and let's add a light select the area light and let's press g z let's move this up after that press s to scale this quite a big something like this let's go to the light settings and from here i'm going to increase the power so right away you can see that now we are able to see a little bit of our scene but we are going to use this as a temporary light for now and let's press zero so you can see that we are able to see a little bit of this cube and maybe we can select this and let's move this little bit closer something like this yeah i think this is looking good now let's start adding some materials to this so first i'm going to move our timeline over here and let's go to the shader editor and let's select this landscape just click on new and let's call this ground now let's zoom in and we're going to make some changes to the principal bsdf first i'm going to change the color and make it like dark something like this then let's press shift a and search for noise texture again press shift a let's search for color ramp just drag it over here after that we can plug in the factor to the factor and this color we can plug it to the roughness now if you have node wrangler installed then you can by simply selecting this node press ctrl t to add the mapping and the texture coordinate and if you have not then you can just simply press shift a and search for mapping and texture coordinate after that we are going to just simply plug the object to the vector now we are going to now if i zoom in you can see that we have a little bit of patches over here which we can increase by simply using these sliders and let's increase the roughness by simply moving these black and white sliders now we can play around with the scale and let's make this really big something like this now detail we i'm going to set this to 16 and let's select the noise texture and press shift d and let's place it over here and again i'm going to select the vector and let's plug the vector into the vector now press shift a and let's search for bump map just simply click on that now i'm going to plug the vector into height and let's plug the normal into normal so if i go out you can see that we have this really nice ground texture something like this which we can play around with the scale so if you want you can just make this 
really small something like this but it, this is completely experimental so you can play around with this on your own so now we are pretty much done with this now let's just simply select our mannequin and on this one you can see we have bunch of different these nodes i'm going to simply select them press x to delete them now let's change its color to something like this and let's make this metallic just like that now let's add some lighting to the environment so that it's clearly visible but first i'm going to add the volumetric so that it will enhance the look of our scene for that just simply press shift a under the mesh let's add a cube now let's press s and scale this up so that it covers the entire scene just scale this up press g z something like that now if i go inside you can see we have the cube something like this and all the 3d model is inside it let's go back to the rendered view and let's go to the camera now we are going to select the outer cube which is this one and on this one let's create a new material and let's call this volumetric now i'm going to simply select the principal bstf then press x and let's delete it press shift a let's add a principal volume now let's plug the volume into the volume and right away you can see that we are not able to see anything because the density is too high but first i'm going to simply select the light and let's increase its brightness to something like 5000 so that we can see what is really happening now you can lower down the intensity and you can see that we have added this really nice volumetric into our scene just like this so we can probably set this 2.2 and i feel like that this cube is like really far so we can just move this closer so just pick a really nice point something like this and let's move this little bit down just like that now we can select our light and let's play around with its position but first let's select the cube and let's give it a really nice bluish color something like this now we can select the area light and let's go out of our scene and we can select this press r and let's rotate it along the y-axis something like this so that we can have a really nice side light and let's place it somewhere around here let's go to the camera and now it's completely up to you you can just simply play around with its position and angle just like that so yeah i think this is looking good and if you feel that the scene is really dark then you can add more lights to this and let's place it somewhere around here now let's add some material to the cube as well so select it just click on new and I'm going to just simply make this little bit darker and let's increase the metallic to 100 and if it's too dark then you can just simply increase set the color to something really light and now you can select this and let's play around with the rotation now it's completely up to you you can play around with the area light to see what looks best for you let's move this to somewhere around here so I think this is looking fine we can probably select the cube and let's make this little bit smaller and let's place it around here we are pretty much done with it now let's add some animation to the camera for that you can select the camera and let's switch to the timeline and i'm going to quickly move this to somewhere around 100 now let's press i and let's add a location and rotation keyframe now let's go to the first frame and i'm going to just simply move this little bit backward something like this now we can also change the angle so that it's facing down just like this now right click click on insert keyframes so now if i play back here you can see we have this really nice animation to the camera and we can also add the animation to the cube so let's go to keyframe one and let's go to the z property right click click insert single keyframe and let's go to 100 and after that you can just simply increase this value just right click insert single keyframe so now if i play back here you can see we have this really nice animation but i think my 3d model is has changed its pose so we can quickly again just fix it by simply going under the pose mode so select the armature go to the pose mode and we can probably delete all the keyframes just click on delete all keyframes and now let's rotate this now if it is not allowing you to change the pose then you can just simply select all the keyframes press x and delete all keyframes then you can just simply rotate it 
and there you go now if i go outside the pose mode there you go now you have your scene and you can just simply check the animation yeah i think this is looking fine let's select the cube and let's may change its material so let's make this darker something like this and let's increase the roughness so yeah, i think this is looking fine so this is how you can create these kind of 3d scenes in blender now once you are done with this all you have to do is just simply render this out so for that you can go under the render setting now let's change the resolution so you can set whatever you want 1920 by 1080 works for me and let's set the end frame to 100 because our animation is 100 frames long and after that we can change the file format to ffmpeg and let's go under the encoding and from here change the container to mpeg4 and after that just simply select wherever you want to save this just click on accept and once you are done with this all you have to do is just simply go to render and from here render animation and this is how you can create 3d scenes like these and the project file for this tutorial is available on patreon so you can support me over there and you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. And also if you are watching this then make sure to subscribe because I upload tutorials related to motion graphics and 3D like these. And if you have any queries or questions then you can ask in the comments below. So with that being said my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.